This is the brand new hot end from Slice Engineering called the Mako. It has the Gamma Master nozzle installed into it. This is for the X1 series printers, the P1 series printers and X1E series as well. I'd like to see what makes this so much different from anything else on the market. And then we'll get this installed and test it out to see how well it performs. We've got problems. Look, it's not finished. So stick around. Recently, I had the opportunity to test out the brand new Bamboo Lab H2D printer. And probably one of my favorite features of this printer has to be these guys. I've been using this nozzle size quite a bit more than I've ever used before. So much so that I decided to order another one and I'll be able to put two point twos in there and print in different colors with that really tiny nozzle. So that's gonna be pretty cool. But there is a problem. That is that this printer is getting a lot more use and this printer is getting neglected. And I don't think that's right. I still think the X1C is a great printer and deserves a little bit more attention. If you own an X1 or P1 series printer, you'll know that you can buy these guys here or you can buy them in a kit with the fan and the wires attached already. The problem is the fact that you need to unplug all of these wires, take the two screws out, and then do the opposite to install the new one as well. The alignment isn't going to be identical when you swap from one to the other. And that's because there's a little bit of clearance in those holes and there's a potential that this can be off on a different angle. Now I've been using the E3D hot end and it has been a really good performer for me for quite a while. I do have some issues with PETG sticking sometimes and I've been applying the slice plastic repellent to that and that's been working fairly well. But it does have the exact same problem. This is available in different nozzle sizes and you'd need to replace the entire piece. And that is where we come to Slice Engineering's Mako solution. So we have a pretty unique fan housing here made of aluminum. We have a CNC machined heat sink with a bit of a step down inside there. But what is most interesting to me is the nozzle. This nozzle design is open source and that means that anybody that can produce nozzles can make one that fits this Mako hot end. So we have Bontech, we have Micro Swiss, we have Diamondback and then they produce their own called the Gamma Master as well. All of those companies are producing nozzles that fit this Mako hot end. Now they have made these quite short and that's to reduce the amount of expansion overall so that it remains tight up against that mating surface inside there. There's no need to mess around with wires anymore. No need to remove any screws here and no need to remove the hot end. We just unscrew the nozzle and put the new nozzle in place. I do like the little sock. It's got these little finger holes here which makes it really easy to push on and pull off as well. So to get some benchmarks, we'll test out the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle and hot end on the X1C. I prepared a brand new 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a new sock. I've also applied the slice plastic repellent to this one as well. Before we do a test, I need to get the 0.8 millimeter hot end out and get a stock 0.4 millimeter in there. So I've got my tools set up down there and I've got a timer as well. Thought it would be interesting to see how long it actually takes to swap that out. And start. And stop. Oh, basically two minutes. I'm gonna be using PLA Basic in red. It took me about an hour to try and get Orca Slicer to work so that I could actually send the max volume flow test to the machine. I uh, wasn't even able to do it. I had to put it on the SD card. I'm gonna do print. Oh God, no G code data, what? Oh, phew, the wrong one. So I'm starting at 12 millimeters cubed per second and I'm going up to 32. And unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to stop this print and I'm gonna to have to recalibrate this because the first layer was not very even. All right, let's try this one more time. I've also adjusted the cubic millimeters per second because I was able to make it up high enough that there's no reason that I should start down at 12. So I'm starting at 14 instead.
So we're definitely having some trouble here with it coming away from the build plate, but you can see in the area where it is still connected, we're starting to have some trouble. And we're measuring about 20 millimeters. So that's 20 millimeters divided by two plus 14. So our stock nozzle around 24 millimeters cubed per second. I've also applied the sliced plaster propellant on the E3D nozzle. And I'll go ahead and recalibrate. Because I have some experience with the E3D hot end, I started down at 20 millimeters cubed per second and I'm going up to 34. I think we'll be able to reach somewhere around 32. We'll have to see. Well, that is a bit of a surprise. It actually made it all the way. Oh, maybe not quite all the way. 27 and a half or so. Yep. So that means we take 20 as the starting point and 27 and a half divided by two, which is 13 and three quarter, 13.75. So that means we have 33.75, nearly 34. Okay, I'm gonna power this off. We'll swap out the hot end now to our new one. This is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I have the Slice Engineering's plastic repellent applied to it as well. I was gonna do the exact same test, but I was reading up on the website about this, and they're suggesting that there could be as much as a 60% improvement over the stock nozzle in the flow. We were getting about 24 millimeters cubed per second. That means we should be getting upwards of 38, or as high as 38. I doubt we're gonna be able to reach that, but I'll adjust the test just to bring it up a little bit higher as well. So we are approaching the height of the last one that I did for the E3D. And I'm starting to see a couple little ripples and defects appear. All right, so I did not need to go all the way up to 38, that's for sure. Let's get this off here and take some measurements. Okay, so the lowest that we have is nearly 21 millimeters. So let's just call it 20. So to make it easy, that's divided by two. So overall 30 millimeters cubed per second. So it looks like we are suffering a little bit on flow right now. What I will say is that this one has the ability to swap out the nozzles. So it is possible that by installing the Bontex CHT style nozzle, which is copper and nickel plated, you can increase the flow rate even more if you're printing with PLA, for example. But for me, I'd be printing with some abrasive filaments. So I'm gonna have to stick with one like this, which is the Gamma Master, or maybe upgrade eventually to the Diamondback. But now what I'm curious about is, do I need to preheat this nozzle in order to swap it? So I just finished reading up on the nozzle swap and they require you to have a minimum of 270 degrees Celsius for the nozzle temp. So I just finished preheating that. But that said, it does negate some of the benefits of this system as far as the time savings goes. But I'm putting quite a bit of force on here now, and this is extremely rigid. So they have done a very good job of creating a solid structure here to make sure that this does not twist or deform, even if you're applying a lot of force. So I just finished this print. Well, I shouldn't say I finished it. It is finished because there ended up being a clog. This is wood fiber filled filament but I thought I would test the Mako in the absolute worst case scenario. So I had the door shut, I had the top on, and I'm printing with the wood fiber, and I ended up getting a clog. But I don't believe that it was a clog due to the actual temperature. I think it was a clog because of the fibers themselves. So I was able to unclog it. You can see the filament coming out. So I'm gonna try this again, but I'm gonna try it without the wood fiber filled because I don't know if it's even recommended for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I'm going to do it again with the door closed and the lid on. And the reason I'm doing that is because I really want to push this to the limit. 
finished and we have success on this one. This is matte PLA, just bamboo matte PLA. And of course we have the top on and the door was closed for the entire print. So did work. I'm gonna go ahead and print the rest of this set and I'll do the exact same thing. Door closed for the entire thing. Well, it is the next morning and we've got problems. Look, it's not finished. And uh, do you know why? Look at this. Spaghetti defects were detected. It thinks that that shape is spaghetti defects. That's hilarious. And we are back and we are going strong. Again, the lid is on, the top is on, and the door is closed. We'll let this finish. It's got another half an hour or so to go. All right, it just finished. So aside from the spaghetti defects that we had, which obviously there are none, it just thought that this pattern was the defect. Very nice pattern, by the way. And I just need to print the top now. I'll put a link to this one down below if you want to try this yourself. This is a model made by Meiyui, M-E-Y-U-I. And it's a cool little seed starter kit. Just need to print the top now. All right, it just finished. So this was basic PLA, and the reason I wanted to try basic PLA was both for the contrast and the color, but also to see how it reacted to having the door closed. And you could see that I actually had the door open, and that's because when I tried to print the basic PLA with the door closed, I did end up getting a clog. You can see just there on the very first layer. So with this hot end, you really can't print with this completely closed in like this because that design is a little bit more prone to clogging with lower melting temperature filaments like PLA. And here it is fully assembled, looking pretty darn good. My wife is gonna be pretty happy with this, I think. It's got a little watering hole. You can monitor and also add water through there. And you can also print a cap if you want to in Clear Pet G. And I printed another one. This time I only had the door open ever so slightly. And I've loaded the entire build plate. Again, matte PLA and the entire print finished without any problems. And this time no spaghetti defects. So no problems with this one. Just need to make sure that if you're printing PLA, you have the door open at least a little bit or the top open if you can, if you don't have the AMS on top of it. I put together the spreadsheet just to be able to compare the different options. So I have a price section, I have a max flow rate and nozzle size. This is not an extensive list by any means. It's just what I think are the most critical parts of any hot end. So I have the stock hot end, I have the E3D Obsidian, I have the Slice Mako that we just tested, and I have the Bichu Revo. The Bichu Revo is this one. I haven't actually tested it, and unfortunately it's because I have this one which has the P1 series adapter and I only have the X1 printer. But I've added it in the list anyway just so we have another point of comparison. So for the stock hot end, we have a good initial price and the additional price is the lowest. So I end up with a very high score. The higher the score, the better. The E3D hot end had an initial price which was quite high and the additional price is also quite high. So I end up with a fairly low score in the price section. The Slice Mako has the highest initial price, but it has the lowest additional price. And that's because you're just purchasing a small little nozzle section. So end up with an okay score at the end. And the Beachy Revo, a uh, fairly high initial price and then decent additional price as well. So kind of middle ground on the overall score for price wise. For the max flow rate for the stock, we had 24. So it's got a decent score. For the Obsidian, it had quite high max flow rate, nearly 34. So it ended up with a high score of 100. The Slice Mako ended up with 30, so it got a score of 90 overall. And the Beachy Revo I put at 30, even though I think it probably can achieve a bit higher. I haven't actually tested it, so I just put that in yellow for now. So for the nozzle sizes available, we have 0.1 now, going all the way up to 1.4. And 1.4 is absolutely massive, considering that the filament itself is 1.75. 
And the only reason we were able to get to that is because when I added the Bichu Revo, they have the one millimeter, 1.2 and 1.4 available for that option. So that does bring it up on the scoreboard quite high. So if we look at the stock, we have 0.2 all the way up to 0.8. So it's got a 50% score. With the E3D, the benefits are high max flow, but there's only a few sizes available and we still have the same issue with swapping. So that's a good option if you don't ever wanna swap, you just wanna stick with one size. Any of different sizes, so it's a bit more important for me, but it may not be critical at all for you. And for the Slice Mako, we have 0.1, 2, 4, 6, and 8, and then it stops there, so we get 62.5 out of 100 on that one. And then the Bichu Revo, 0.2 all the way up to 1.4, 87.5% for that one. So you can see the Bichu Revo kind of kicked everybody else's butt as far as the amount of nozzle sizes that are available. And then we had Slice Mako next. The E3D is quite low, but it might not be important depending on what you're using it for. And then the stock is kind of somewhere in the middle. So overall score, we had the stock with a decent score, 67, the E3D with 51, the Slice Mako was 73, and then the Bichu Revo was 74. So with the stock, some of the important things are lower max flow and the fact that you need to swap and you need to unplug all those little connectors. At some point, that is going to pull either the wires out or it's going to affect the board and it's going to wear down over time. For the Mako, we have good max flow, not the highest, lots of different options. I would say that the PLA should be printed with the door open. Another option could be to use this, which is, again, Bichu's option. They have a skeletonized cover, which is gonna allow a lot more airflow to come in there, and the fan will get a lot cooler air coming in and making sure everything stays as cool as possible. With the Bichu Revo, I still need to test it, but it does look like a pretty good option. This was actually the second release of the Mako Hot End. The first time there were some complaints about clogging with lower temperature filaments. So what Slice did is they listened and made some adjustments. And I think that's at least partly why they decided to add the aluminum fan housing. And it is for that reason that I wanted to test the Mako in more extreme conditions by picking a difficult print with small extrusion and retraction cycles and printing with PLA and having the chamber completely closed as well. So it isn't recommended to do what I did, of course, and we did end up with some clogging, but with the door open even a little bit, the problem seemed to go away. Changing to a threaded nozzle requires the hot end to resist a good amount of torque, so it needs to be beefed up, which does add a little bit of weight, and it also causes the heat break to be completely surrounded, so it does produce some additional challenges. The benefit on the other hand of this system is that the cost per nozzle is much lower than the entire hot end and now we can experiment with different nozzle types and nozzle sizes. Recently they released the 0.1 millimeter nozzle called the Keika Fin and I happen to have some extremely precise gears that I need to print so I will be trying that one out for sure though I'm not really sure how it's going to be possible to use it in Bamboo Studio so I might be forced to try and use Orca Slicer. My final take is that this is a good upgrade if you need to swap between sizes like I do. If you stick to the same size for all your prints, it probably doesn't make much sense. And the E3 hot end is likely a better option because of the higher native max flow. I like the open source direction. It also seems well engineered and those small nozzles help to keep the cost down. I'll continue to test it out and you will see this being used in upcoming videos as well. If you're enjoying this type of content, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. And thank you to Slice for sending this to me to test out. I will have a link below to their site if you want to take a closer look. It is not an affiliate link. If you do want to help support this channel, I have a very short list of products that I've tested below that I know perform well. Thanks to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel. And thank you for watching. I hope to see you on the next one.